This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be diving into episode two of the original Sailor Moon. Uh, now, apologies if I'm a little bit out of it today. Uh, as you may know from last week, we have a uh, some guests here for the first time, and one of them is the uh, the, the daughter of the family. And um, we had a bit of an emergency this, uh, this morning. She uh, wanted to take a tour of the tower, and uh, she was very interested in things and uh, got a little overexcited and uh, managed to break the lever off of the antenna repositioning system. So um, got that to, to deal with now. And uh, unfortunately, she, boy, she got really upset. Uh, and just broke out into tears and ran out and uh, kind of no consoling her. So that's something I'm going to have to deal with at this point. Her parents don't mind. I think they're used to this. But uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to deal with that. Uh, anyway, we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Meanwhile, I wanted to talk to you all about the staff who made Sailor Moon go a little bit deeper into their stories. So let's head to the research room. Welcome to the research room where we're going to spotlight the staff of the original Sailor Moon. Now, a few folks here to talk about, and we'll start with... Naoko Takeuchi, the mangaka behind the original Sailor Moon. Uh, now, she's really most known for Sailor Moon. She did a few things before uh, Sailor Moon, some moderately popular work, some one-shots and short series. But Sailor Moon was really her runaway hit. Um, after that came out, she made a variety of moderately popular works. Um, of, again, various lengths, usually longer in that case, but nothing that really captured the public imagination the way Sailor Moon did. And ever since, she's really been focusing on Sailor Moon. She's heavily involved in the anime remake and in a lot of the um, new Sailor Moon products coming out. So there was a big art book project she was involved in not long after Sailor Moon came out. So a lot of this in terms of being very focused on Sailor Moon itself, it's really the big thing she's known for. Now, the anime was initially directed by Junichi Sato, who uh, has directed a ton of anime. Uh, he directed, oh my gosh, um, Sakura Wars, Pre-Tier, Princess Tutu, Ajumajo Doremi, Sergeant Frog, Arya the Natural, something that he was very heavily involved with, Hugto Precure. Now you'll see on these a lot of magical girl shows, Princess Tutu, Doremi Precure. Um, obviously having had that experience in Sailor Moon, that was one of his, uh, it's a good mark on the resume if you want to then do a magical girl series. But it's not the only thing he works on. Uh, obviously Sergeant Frog is not magical girl, Sakura Wars is not either. So you see kind of a variety of here uh, of works here. He's also a storyboarder. He's called in to do a lot of storyboarding on things. So he did storyboarding on Evangelion, on Escaflone, Cowboy Bebop, Utna, The Big O, Vampire Knight, um, a lot of mecha anime, surprisingly. And the thing is, Sato is often brought in to storyboard the conversation scenes in Mecca, not just general chatting, but like when the characters all sit down and have a real moment together, that's where they bring in Sato. He's just really good at highlighting those character moments as folks are deepening their relationships. Uh, so that's a really big uh, deal, and I think you can see how Sailor Moon would help with that, where there, there's a lot of interrelationship stuff in Sailor Moon. So he worked on basically the first season and a half 
of Sailor Moon. And then in came uh, Kunihiko Ikuhara. Uh, Ikuhara is a notable individual. He's known for making very weird anime. Revolutionary Girl Utena, Mawaru Penguin Drum, Yurikuma Arashi. Uh, anime with a lot of heavy symbolism, a lot of very weird things going on, but it's meant to be weird. Like It's meant to be unusual and to catch your attention for how weird it is while still remaining while still having some fundamental important things to say like the the weirdness isn't completely accidental there is a method to it there is there are symbols that mean something underneath all of it sometimes it's just weird but uh ikohara is is known for managing and, and combining those things. As I think I mentioned, um, uh, I may mention later on with, with Steve, if we get to it, um, if you're familiar with David Lynch, it's that kind of idea. It's not exactly the same as Lynch, but that idea that there's weird things happening, but it does fit together in some way. That's what Ikuhara's works feel like. So two really remarkable uh, directors working on Sailor Moon there. So wanted to call that out in terms of those staff members for Sailor Moon. Hope that's useful and uh, let's get back up to the tower. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update on Bunny. That's the girl. Um, I ended up taking her down to the cafe and sat her down in front of the screen and put on Goldfish Warning. This is an anime that I kind of reserve for when I want folks to watch something really ridiculous and over-the-top comedy. And that did seem to kind of calm her down a little bit. She was laughing in no time. Uh, funnily enough, Goldfish Warning connects into Sailor Moon. Um, Goldfish Warning was the anime that aired in the same time slot as Sailor Moon before uh, Sailor Moon uh, aired. So like the year before Sailor Moon came out, Goldfish Warning was the anime in its time slot. And again, it's a very over-the-top, ridiculous comedy, but a lot of the staff of Goldfish Warning ended up coming over to Sailor Moon, continuing on into Sailor Moon. And I think you can see that in the highly comedic uh, tone of Sailor Moon, especially in its early periods. And like the, the first half of a lot of these episodes is very much silly comedy. Uh, so if you're looking for more of that and ramped up, Check out Goldfish Warning. It's actually a lot of fun. I haven't been able to find an official release in English, only fan subs, but it's out there. And again, I think it is just a really fun ride. Uh, meanwhile, let's go and get in. I want you to keep an eye out for how Tuxedo Mask acts differently this time around when he shows up. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, Tuxedo Mask shows up briefly. And check out how he interacts this time. It's a little bit different. But... Uh Anyway, let's go ahead and get the guys in and watch episode two of Sailor Moon. All right, looks like we've got both John and Steve in here. How y'all doing? It's a hot day up here in Baltimore, and uh, things are just a little bit squirrely, so yeah, glad to be here, though. Fair it's enough. It's steamy down in southwest Virginia, so it's uh, Roanoke is... Uh... They're hanging in. Okay. Yeah, it looks a little steamy out the window there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's let's watch some anime to chill out and relax. And a little bit more of uh, the effervescent Sailor Moon. Well. Huh. <laughs> Thank you, Sailor Moon. That's that's very classy of you to put in your cold open right right there. Fanboys unite. Mm -hmm. Are they holding <laughs> rocks? Um, I'm assuming we will find out in the episode. Something. Oh, yeah, it's, something's about to happen. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Clearly things are about to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I have to pause to just to reiterate, <clears throat> like, this is such a visually interesting opening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the weird sort of carnival atmosphere of the visuals... And the idea that it's sort of this dreamscape, I don't know. It's just, it is very attractive. Well, also did with the clouds and the black and white, it feels like a horror entry. Yeah. Right. Like, you're, uh, this is not what I'm expecting from, from Sailor Moon. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, okay. Totally. Have we talked about the flowers? Like, how they're doing that? No, we've not. Like, 
how is it, how are they, I mean, that's really interesting animation that they have it centered in there and just the petals are coming off, but it's like twirling. Yeah. On top of, of what's already happening. And yeah, that's let's, just... Let's look to see here because I'm, I'm uncertain. So if we move forward... Yeah, that's that's frame by frame animation. They're not just spinning the image; they're literally redrawing one, yeah. it every time. Wow, wow! That's quite a, lot a commitment of work. to this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Interesting. No. And you you think what that represents? Um, growth, growing old and a dying. A <laughs> blooming flower often is represented as maidenhood. True, yeah. Um, mm. A Giorgio O'Keefe, uh, more so uh, mm. in a lot of Giorgio O'Keefe's paintings. Mm. Um, I, I'm noticing in the background we've got text again. You're right. What oh, yeah. uh, I noticed one snippet of it said had Goethe. Past five years, Something, little so... meant popularity known as the job. Siviero had developed. Performance? I don't know. I don't. I mean, this is one of those things where what is it? The the Bakke Monogatari series where you have a lot of mm. reading that goes on. Yeah. I have no idea. Are we supposed to be pick? Is this is there they're giving us something? Are we supposed to be reading this? Is this somehow interpretive to what we're watching? You know. Yeah, I'm know. assuming not. Not uh, because it's you know opening to a magical girl anime, but I'm I'm, assuming... I'm just imagine. I'm just imagining all these girls watching this magical girl anime kind of going, yeah. okay, I can't read English, <laughs> but there it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's see. I mean, right, do we get Gareth any? Though. No. That's where it starts. Uh, like like an explanation? Just... Museum of Fine Arts in something after the painting had somehow been smuggled out of Italy. Yeah. It's about some kind of some kind of thing. Huh. Something so I see up at the top. Underworld of like, from the heights. Goethe thefts have been something. Yeah, interesting. I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like you, we, we all know from experience that you don't randomly include yeah. text that is full text. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can throw different words like newspapers where it's like if there's a word or yeah, two, it's just gobbledygook. So that's why I'm saying it's like this is a fairly large chunk mm -hmm. of text. Why is it this text? Yeah. That's what I wonder, but I don't know what happened next. If it wasn't just Sato saying, hey, so I'm going to go down to the conveni, get a newspaper, English newspaper. <laughs> you know, I'm going to slap it down. Just put it in there. <clears throat> exactly. I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting that that is there. Yeah, absolutely. So just to call it out, we have a complete summary of what's so right. far for the audience. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so presumably assuming thus that the audience is not familiar with the manga. Uh, and as we mentioned before, Manga came out just a little bit before the anime. It was more or less contemporaneous. So interesting how much they, they kind of need to bring the audience along. I do have to call out also here the animation, how the lights flicker as they come on. Yeah. It's a brief, and they come on because Versus of the... Just automatically coming on, yeah. Right, because yeah. of the... And I forget the, the term for those uh, bulbs. They were like... Uh, Allergen? Uh, the, the halogen, where yeah, it takes a little while for them to actually. Uh, mercury you know. vapor bulbs. Oh, okay, that might be what I'm thinking of too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Because um, they have that that weird kind of hum, mm -hmm. and it starts very low light, and then it kind of once it gets hot, and then it goes mm -hmm. on. Yep. So. So. It's a little animation, and again, one of those things where it takes a little extra effort to remember to, you know, put put the frame there and take it off, put it back on, um, and just you know make sure you're drawing those things. But it just adds a little realism. So a, t a yeah. dude in an alley with a line. <laughs> yep. Like no beat cop is going to go, ah, oh, there's nothing wrong here. That's okay because it's been on TV several See. times. Yeah. Not as a scam or some kind of like, you know, ring where they kidnap you or anything. No, nothing apparently. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> huh? You wonder how much this was, I mean, is this just for the convenience of the anime, or was this a thing in the 90s Japan? Right. I don't know. Yeah, check out the flashing earring, which is similar to Sailor Moon's thing. Oh, ah, yeah. Didn't expect that to be a connection. And he doesn't, he doesn't look suspicious at all, by the no. way. No. Standing in line with a bunch of teenage girls. 
<laughs> coat and trench coat. Hat yeah, and, 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 exactly. and he's like six five, and they're all like four foot high. Yeah, right. So, yeah. I'm weird about that. Nothing at all. As we pointed out, this is a different angle on the house than we had last time. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still. Thank you. It's still beautifully done. It really you know? is. No question. Ooh, the window's closed. The first rendition of oh, had, you're the right. futon was yeah. hanging out. And the window was open. Now the window is closed. And the futon's hanging out. You're absolutely right. That's a great detail. Huh. Dang. And the, I think the lower door wasn't open when the window up was. So mm. now it's kind of reversed. Like, ah, and there's, there's so much interesting detail to that. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Let's be honest. If you've had cats, you've had this happen to you. Yes. In the past. How is that hiding? <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't think that's going to work there. Usagi. No. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're, we're reaching for the stars here, buddy. <laughs> He's shooting for the moon, if you will. Ah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Did there. Yes. <laughs> Slow your roll a little bit here, man. Maybe. Whoa. What? Whoa. No. 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 Um, <clears throat> uh, again, relax a little bit, maybe. Oh, my God. <laughs> Trading diaries, meeting parents to attacking her. Whoa, hey, yeah. hang on. Put, exactly. put the chloroform away, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what was that effect for? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Boing. It's so weird that all of a sudden it's Petticoat Junction <clears throat> sound effects. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, all I wanted for him to say, I wish I had seen this coming. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second here. Now, fortune teller, are you? <laughs> okay, that's legitimately interesting. Um, yeah. Is that Tuxedo Mask? So you think Tuxedo Mask in the disguise is an old fortune teller? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Oh, the oh, man that likes you. It. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, wow, why would Tuxedo Mask go to that much effort? No, that's weird. Yes. I, yes. I think so. Yeah. Well, unless it's you, you, or do you think it's, that's the ambiguity? Is it yeah. Glasses Kid or Tuxedo Mask? Mm hmm. Yeah. They, they may be playing off that a bit. <clears throat> Well, uh, never mind. Oh, no, no. Okay, I, I guess it must be. Okay. It's, oh, well. it's Kidnap Boy. All right. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's not a bad question, Brent. I think it's really, mm -hmm. that is. It's a nice sort of, even though it's only for a split second, mm -hmm. we we already seen Tuxedo Mask come in, and we've seen Usagi kind of like, ooh. So True. that's a really interesting moment that you get like, well, who could he be talking mm -hmm. about? So. Yeah, maybe. Huh. Oh, my. Wow. Actually touching hands. She's pregnant and they're married now. Pretty much. Yes. By the yep. rules. By the rules. Oh, we have a visitor. Yep. Luna showed up. Gonna ruin mm. the whole thing. Pretty much. I mean, first she had the heroin look going. Like, like she's like totally <laughs> drugged out. And then she sees the cat. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Um, I do appreciate, too, that they... You know, let the audience realize it at about the same time Usagi does, you know, yeah. and they acknowledge the, the the joke. So you can see here an example of um, having an issue with color. There's one frame in this cycle where her skirt is a slightly different color, blue. I know it's mm. a small thing, but as we move, oh, let me mute it. As we move forward, you'll see there. Uh, oh. go back and forth. Oh, uh, yeah. So they just got, and I think it's the same color, the the darker color is the same color as the shit sash. Mm. Um, okay. So they just reuse that color down there. Yeah, small thing. So what is it about this guy that seems so, I don't know, bland? Right. There's not, well, I mean, it, he's just not... He's just a working stiff, and he's there's nothing special about him, nothing sparkling, nothing doing anything. Yeah. And, well, he uh, pays attention to Usagi. He yeah, knows that's her, it. greets True. her, and so she's familiar with him. He's not, I mean, he's not tuxedo mask, but, you know, he's a not bad looking character. Yeah. I, I, I can see why she would be attracted to him from a pure, you know, uh, hormonal perspective, right? Cute guy. Right. I get that. But, like, as a character, it's interesting that they, they're giving us nothing to actually, like, latch on to him as a an interesting romantic partner. Right. Um, and for all we know, he's a demon overlord. Right, exactly. 
Also, one of the things that, that I thought was interesting is like, why did we spend time and money in watching her pick up her bag? True. Yeah, that's a good point. No. I is is there something that. in the bag that 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 activates her power or whatever? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it it does feel like just one of those little. Um, things where it's like it's it, it, go ahead I was going to say we want you to pay attention to this but we're not going to tell you why right yeah. exactly yeah. Um, maybe it's to remind us that she's not completely forgetful uh, mm -hmm. that she doesn't just run out without her bag um, she's aware of it uh, I don't know but you're right it is odd that they foreground that well, that's what I always say. Right. To say all of your... When I meet a girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of your female customers, you say that to them, right? He yeah. says that to every girl. <laughs> that's great. Right. I have a permanent your bruise face. on the left side of my face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give them full credit for writing that name in English backwards correctly. Yeah. Yes. 1992, that's legitimately impressive. I mean... Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch enough Sailor Moon and you start to expect this. Yeah. Well, are we offering? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's interesting that he leads with this. Yeah. Um, besides being kind of mis misogynistic. But I do wonder if there's kind of an undertone there, too, of a um, unmet need, if you will. Hmm. Mm. I'm just impressed he didn't smell her shoe. True. Yes. <laughs> How deeply disturbing would that be? Yeah. <laughs> I like your shoes. Oh, God. <laughs> no, you can you can keep the shoe. That's that's fine. That's, uh... Oh dear. I like the tango. Yeah. I was just gonna say, here. <laughs> like... I was just gonna say that's like really good, like. Like music to have with like two comp competing people that you're like, oh no, they're gonna fall in love. They're, yeah, they're just, that's a good point. Tracks and you know. it is a type of dance that they have just gone through. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. like, that's very appropriate. I'm yeah, like, oh. that, that's a great point. We show our love with abuse. So. <laughs> well, yes, this seems fine. It, I'm, I'm like getting visions of a cult, and then be like, "Here, lay down on this bed, drink this thing, we'll put a sheet over your face, you meet the great, great Gazurger Burger mm -hmm. out in space, and you'll ascend." <laughs> yeah. Those are just charcoal braziers, and everybody loves carbon monoxide. Right, it's fine. <laughs> oh, it's all okay. Exactly. Also, tarot. again, impressive, impressive. Those are actual tarot cards. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they took the time to figure out what the tarot cards would be and, you know, draw in all of those symbols. Cool. Hold on. Pardon? Sorry, what did she just say? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, when you're having, you know, when you're, when you're getting a service and you hear that, that's when you leave. Yes. That's when you run away very, very quickly. <laughs> Screaming if you want, but yes. run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also the floating card should also be a, an indicator that True. something's not right. Yeah. Maybe he can't see through the glasses very well, in fairness. Yeah. yeah they are awfully squiggly and swirly, so that's really mm -hmm. hard. Though. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I you can't... never see that. I was just going to say, I can't think of the last Magical Girl show where I've seen the character's father and other than maybe over the shoulder at the dinner table. Right. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Well, at least her mother's still alive, right? It's true, yeah. <laughs> so it's not a Disney show. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Hey. oh. Electric Complex, anybody? Oh, yeah. wow. Oh. Okay. That okay. wasn't a tr that wasn't a thing I needed to see because now that just <laughs> creeps me out. Uh, <laughs> that took a turn. Can okay. I call you daddy? Oh boy. Oh no. No. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, onions I mean, are gonna have a new meaning now. Oh. In fairness, <laughs> it is kind of impressive for the show to show girls, right? Like this is what you this is where this may be coming from. 
you know, to, to make that connection of saying, hey, if you like a guy because he's like your dad, like, that's, that's you, you're liking because he's like your dad. Like, hmm. Yeah. He's sweet. He's considerate. He is manly in his manly way. Mm-hmm. And yet it comes off, you like your dad. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe she's not biologically related to her dad. <laughs> we don't get those plot lines for another good decade, Steve. Come on. Um, and I'll say, you know, obviously, it's it's you know, it's not wrong to recognize positive attributes in two men, right? Like I can right. I can see some okay, right. nice person, nice person. I got it, but still. Right. But this is like really Oedipus kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, bit. that looking at daddy and all of a sudden here's Makoti or whatever that whatever his mm. name is, like immediately overlay oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what the uh got worse. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's that, that's a, that that did not age well. Well, that happened. I thought when the intro part that was a st- student. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's in for a beating. Whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> also, just to say, oh. uh, that's what you're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little, a little odd. Very uh, uh, culturally very interesting for him to not wear the school uniform, mm-hmm. for him to eat in school outside of the lunch hour to mm-hmm. eat in front of a teacher yep. to disrespect a teacher by ignoring their instruction and to yep. then sexually harass their teacher yeah exactly they are really just tripling down on like what a bad boy would be 100 percent. so this is the most evil thing that they act like the delinquents mm-hmm. and, you know and honestly i was kind of thinking to myself like thinking about like back when i was in high school we had an actual police officer in our school wow why? Why is it? Why is the? Don't they have one? And and why aren't they being curb stomped? Yeah, no, they, they would not have police yeah. officers in school. Um, uh, uh, yeah, remember, these are also the janitors you're looking at. Oh, true. Right. True. True. Um, yeah. So it is up to the teachers to kind of police this kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but, so obviously playing off of the uh, school delinquent trend of the 70s mm-hmm. and 80s, right? That whole that whole thing and kind of moving that forward into into the 90s. Uh, but yeah, I, it's interesting seeing this from the perspective that to your point Steve of a culture where this is so so extreme. Yeah, uh, that there's yeah. just nobody even none of none of the adults even know how to deal with it. Presumably. Which is interesting cuz I mean We've seen where you have teachers come out with the giant sort of hook thing. Yeah. <laughs> like when strangers show up at school and they use that to push them back. Mm. Uh, I have no idea when in space and time that that was a thing that teachers were trained to do. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, is this I is everybody sort was, of being. I was in that was comedy. That wasn't a real thing. I honestly, I think there there is. There was. I was watching a YouTube video of somebody who was in Japan teaching in a Japanese school, mm-hmm. and they were talking about the drills that the teachers actually have, where they use that weird sort of U-shaped oh. thing to all the teachers get around, basically press you from different sides, and it gotcha. immobilizes you. Interesting. Okay. But I don't know in time and space because, yeah. to your point, Steve, there wouldn't be a cop there. Yeah. But if that is a thing from time mm. before. I'm surprised that, you know, bulky, gruff PE teacher didn't come right. out yeah, and yeah, get yeah. the Somebody, hook yeah. and start yeah. pushing the kids around. So, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's interesting. It's, it's, it's not like that scene amazing. in Akira where, where they line the kids up and they literally just, <laughs> oh, respect, <laughs> respect. Yeah. Slap each one of them. Yeah. And in fairness, this is, you know, presumably morning of day one. Right. You know, uh, so yeah. the teachers don't even know what to do here at, the, at this point. I wonder if this was shocking. Yeah. for kids watching this at the time to be like, oh my god, the behavior. Oh. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> the demonic figure of F.U. <laughs> yeah. I wonder when that will stop being funny to me. <laughs> Probably not until the end of what we're watching. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> uh, also, animators might want to actually make him laugh when he's laughing, but just, just saying. <laughs> he's laughing on the inside, Brad. Right, really. <laughs> The power of annoying screeching. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I do appreciate that one of her powers is just 
annoying screeching. Yes. <laughs> well, no kidding, Luna. <laughs> thanks, Luna. Thanks, thanks for the heads up. I mean, I feel so an evil energy. It's called puberty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh. Yeah. That's a quick, quick recovery. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> Sagi knew to ask for a new item. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming who's that is the pet here. Yeah, um, I'm assuming that is kind of a joke on her greed. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also playing off a little bit of the the magical girl tropes. Okay, what horrors await us in this episode? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna assume another you know horrible creature lady thing, and then I can't imagine how the people are going to end up attacking Usagi. But mm -hmm. broken bottles, perhaps? Maybe sure, they'll go maybe. with that again. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm assuming the cards are razor sharp and will you know cut her to yeah. ribbons. Mm. And I love her her uh, martial arts technique. Yeah. Lack thereof, I mean. I still want to know how Luna taught um, Usagi how to do the transformation dance. That's this is what you know, you know. I, I actually saw a, a hilarious thing which says that um, uh, every Japanese girl has watched so much Magical Girl that uh, as soon as they're tasked with being a Magical Girl, they just know to make things up, right? It's just <laughs> it, it inherent in their DNA now that they just come up with some phrase and dance. You know, it's just. <laughs> Which, I mean, we know that Usagi likes Sailor V. True. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I that's, know. Maybe, you're, maybe you're right. Maybe that's yeah. supposed to be, oh, she already knows that magical transformations exist. And she just mm -hmm. said, I'll do one similar. And yeah. we're just supposed to accept that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There, we, there go. we go. Okay. So Medusa, presumably. What kind of Backwards walk is forward? that? Yeah. They moved their right legs twice. And now they're moving yeah. their left leg twice. You see that? Yeah. Wait, go back weird. again. Go back again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. like step, stomp, stomp, step, step. Yeah. Huh? Kind of weird. It is a dance move, and it does feel very much like thriller. Like thriller, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and it, it is. I think you're getting vibes, like gangrene gang vibes from Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> wonder where that come, yeah. is maybe where that comes from. <clears throat> be funny. Whoa. Wait a minute. Right. Where did she just wait, get wait, um, Looks like forehead. So this is the first time Tuxedo Mask is actually attacking the enemy. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That's it? That's my advice. See you later. <laughs> I showed up to throw a rose. order not check in the mail, Good luck. please. <laughs> but, I mean, you, at least before he stood in the window and watched, yeah. just in case things went south. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great he's that confident in Usaki's abilities. True. But. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. Huh. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty serious that's, stuff. That yeah. noise. I mean, that was like yeah. good follies, but I, I was like, damn. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I ask why the villains need to suffer so much in their deaths. Like, the whole time I kept hearing, What a world! What a world! <laughs> <laughs> they held on that like a few seconds longer than they needed to. I don't know. <laughs> on the idea that if you're evil, you suffer. Yeah, terribly. that's true. And I suppose in fairness, in that case, we had to, she had to dissolve until we got to the card in her heart. Yes. So, uh, clearly learning from Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Take off while you can. <clears throat> I assume you're all okay. No brain damage or anything. So, see ya. And face plant. And face plant. No other Sailor Scouts. Not Still. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Still sticking with Usagi. Why do you think that is? Because... Well, I mean, this is only episode two, so we're, we're yeah. trying to really get our baseline down for her magic screaming crying attack <laughs> like some of her transformation stuff and what, get like, comfortable with it maybe because i think all that was communicated in episode one so i'm wondering why we need another episode of basically the same thing to before we get to the other sailor scouts i don't know i wonder if 
having a team was so radical that they had to keep it as a single magical girl for a while until the audience got used to it. And then they could start bringing in other magical girls. Like, you know, obviously, you know, obviously we're going to get what's her name of that, that she idolizes as Sailor V mm -hmm. Sailor V as showing up and, and basically saying, Oh, you're the so-and-so mm. I guess. I Although she isn't even in the opening credits yet. That's true. She's not. Which is interesting. I, I would assume that too, that she would meet mm -hmm. Sailor V. Sailor V would say, Oh, you're the next Sailor Scout. You know, let's team up and then we get the other ones. But we haven't even seen any indication of that. Other possibility is, you know, we've seen Sailor V in the actual show, so that's enough introduction to her to have her show up. Maybe. Right. <clears throat> is this? Do you think? I mean, we're we're establishing a little bit more of t Tuxedo Mask than just mm. stand up and give advice. True. Um, and now he's actually taken a little action in doing something mm. when Usagi is kind of in a corner. Yeah. Um. We know that her glasses friend really likes her now. We've established that and how he's going to be sort of interacting in that. Is it Naru, the girl from the... the is that the girl who's so. her friend? Yeah. Um, we've established that, you know, she's got a classmate girlfriend mm -hmm. that is not magical, mm -hmm. that, you know, has interaction with these other people that are sort of on the periphery of Usagi's mm -hmm. life. So maybe this is just all interconnected building blocks mm. where they're setting out some of the piece part characters that will then once we start to induce the other scouts that you'll have a background of characters that can then still interact with usagi and maybe have more depth for interaction with the other scouts i don't know maybe because because we, we met all those characters in episode one yeah and we but we've gotten a little bit more you know, what will Glass's kid do to get Usaki to pay attention? You know what I mean? It's like, mm, right. it just feels True. like you're trying to build the world up yeah. a little bit, but I don't know why you would need to. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, they're not very yeah. deep characters that are around her. We just, we know a little bit more about them. We see mm -hmm. them now a little bit more. Yeah. Get on with the scouts. I mean, I don't know. Do, do we think that maybe Tuxedo Mask is busy with the other scouts getting them up to speed? Oh, um, because we're yeah. scouting the scout with yeah. the yeah. ice and roses. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, here you go, here you go, here you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, or, or you know, Luna hasn't said anything about True. the other scouts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of wondering if, actually, maybe it's like they're saying, well, we got the team. Except for this one person, and 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 dear lord, she cried. She's an idiot, and <laughs> and we got to do something with her, and yeah. so we got to get her up to speed before we introduce her to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. Or it's also possible that we need Usagi to get more comfortable with her powers first. Yeah. Before she's, <clears throat> she has to sort of mentor the other girls. And again, I don't I don't know how they're gonna do this, but yeah. if they're all going to join Usagi, maybe she needs to cry a little bit less when she yeah. meets them. Who knows? And not freeze What's up. Your power? Not I'm like, annoying hey, use me. your tiara. You know, mm -hmm. like, maybe Usagi should know to use that so yeah. on mm -hmm. her own. Yeah. So. Steve, you're saying? No, I, I, I was just saying she's just using her power of annoying crying and, you know, just... <laughs> Can we, can we get you have a tiara you have these things on your head and you know we're, you, know, you don't need to just scream cry all the time <laughs> <clears throat> oh it does seem to work though I mean he true noticed. yeah I'm sure it'll never happen again no not at all certainly not and and what will happen between the love triangle of Usagi actually square of Usagi Matoko Matoki of the arcade okay, yep. tuxedo mask and Glasses, chloroform boy. What, what do you think? <laughs> Five, actually, because you got the father in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah the father. Yeah. Nice. Don't get daddy. Daddy. I mean, oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Those things where they probably went that completely innocently, where it's just like, you know, she sees this, she sees attributes that she appreciates in her father right. and the boy, but it just comes off so weird. Yeah. And notice that she doesn't see that with, with Smug Boy or Tuxedo Mask. True. Yep. Right? There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So that, what does that say? Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> I like the bad boys. 
<laughs> the bad boy's like my dad. Uh, Wait, uh... what? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I have no other scouts in the next episode either. <clears throat> huh. And I feel like what, what we've just seen the entire of next episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of see where that's going. You guys mm. probably tipped us a little too much what's happening. Maybe. Just possibly. Huh. Stay asleep, the sleeping illness. Also known as chloroform. Protect the girls' <laughs> hearts in love. Oh. Oh, a oh dear. It should be noted how much romance there is in this. Yeah. Uh, especially compared to the average magical girl show. Like most magical girls have no boyfriend, no right. interest in boyfriends, any of that. Maybe they'll have some, you know, oh he's dreamy. Um right. this is very focused on that for these first few episodes. Huh. Do you think that we're this is building to some kind of crescendo. We've seen the jewelry store attempt. We've seen now the fortune teller attempt. <coughs> Apparently there's going to be a flower related florist event. <laughs> um, I wonder if they're building this. So we, we, again, we're putting the blocks down to like make the foundation of like Usagi's little world. Yep. And we're going to have Usagi, you know, with a little bit of help from Tuxedo Mask, build up defeat Queen Beryl's, you know, big plans three or four or five times. And then Beryl says, that's it. I'm sending in, like, 20 bad guys. Mm -hmm. And that is the moment where, where Usagi is, like, overwhelmed, and Luna's like, we gotta uh, call in, like, help. On the reserves, and you know. then that's where we start mm. to meet the other uh, scouts, because... Yeah. Now Beryl is upping the ante. It's, it's, it's she's not getting yeah. it done with one bad guy Good against point. Usagi. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't know, but it's like it yeah. just feels like we're we're getting if we're not seeing the scouts already by episode three, mm -hmm. we must be building to a big enough event that they yeah. need the scouts. Yeah, I, I like that. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you have a different sense of the show now? I didn't know episode two compared to episode one. How would you contrast your your opinions now? Because I feel like I'm I've definitely got a better handle on the tone of the show. Right. The general comedic nature of it. Uh, it's definitely at this point I would say comedy is the overtone. Yeah. Um, and then little bits of you know, kind of romance and action and a little drama melodrama um, right um, but overall it feels uh, definitely light and upbeat yeah which I appreciate yeah. Um, and I do also think they are settling into that more where I, I feel like I, I feel like episode one partly because it has to do so much at once Right. Felt a little rushed at times, whereas right. this episode feels a little bit more um, uh, maturely paced. I I think that when we go through episode one and and we go through that horrific monster turning of the neck and just the mm -hmm. actual yeah. bones creaking and all that crap, um, you know, just just very horrific. And now we kind of settled into okay, we have a monster of the week, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. we have the the next person, and obviously we're going into an, a, to something else here. And so you, you go, okay, well we're going to go into a monster of the week. We've established that there's this screen barrel who needs energy. There's this mm -hmm. secret thing that they can't find, and so we have to set up a multiple episode seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime of them trying to find the, of them finding the silver jewel or whatever it is. We're going to try and steal energy for any which way we can, mm, yeah. you know, and, and and so, you know, here's the monster of the week to do that. Yep. And then with Tuxedo Mask coming in, doing the same thing again, which is, you know, throwing okay. the rose and then, hey, fuck up, camper. I'm going to be <laughs> gone, you know, <clears throat> you know, you get the, you know, of course, you know, you, you only want the, the dreamy part and that's what she does. Mm -hmm. And um, but you you get a tone that. You know, shows that there is some risk going on here. Sure. 
and <clears throat> you know where where the, the villains aren't just oh Scooby look it's the old man withers <laughs> from the, the thing and wants all the kids to go away from his shack chicken shack mm-hmm. um, you know it's it, it's like a swamp. legit yeah <laughs> it, it's just legitimate like you know okay this bad things are happening yeah, and true. and you know, you know you need to do you need to do the thing but it's definitely aimed for like I mean, the second episode just says, "Hi, you're a 14 year old girl in the eighth grade. Here you go. Um, Here you go. Here um, you." Go. Actually, to that, to your point about danger, uh, this has threatened crowds of <clears throat> Usagi schoolmates in both episodes. Yeah. So th- that is that is a real thing. Uh, I should also note, uh, Steve, uh, John, and I actually watched episode one of Sailor Moon Crystal. Oh, okay. The, the modern remake, just to compare it with the first episode of the original. Uh, scary Monster Girl from episode one. Uh huh. She does not turn her head. There's no bone breaking. She does not grab Naru's neck. Wow. Um, Naru just sees her and like she's backed up against the wall. Sailor Moon right. comes in and Scary Girl turns around, faces um, Usagi. There's no beer bottle. Wow. Um, it's much more tame in the remake. Wow. No mall liquor like rage. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. You know, it's just, these are these are the things that that I love about what we do with this. Mm. And again, Brent, thank you for bringing me in on to, on to doing this. You're welcome. Because if I had watched episode one, I'm not sure I would watch an episode two. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's yeah. it's it's got some you know amusing light moments to it, mm-hmm. but looking at it in a more critical eye, I'm interested in having seen episode two, yeah, to see where it's going. Mm-hmm. More so than a casual view where it's like, oh, this is you know, that's fine. It's got some interesting colors. It's an old school style. I'm, I'm yeah. not. It doesn't really speak to me in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. But it's like just the analysis that we can bring to <clears> like, I. I I do honestly feel like the building blocks that they've thrown down to this are are piecing together a world that's inhabited by all these little bits and pieces that then pay off later. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't know what Steve the bag is about. Or her yeah. the specific <laughs> picking up the kaban. Yeah. But I feel like now we've seen glasses boy mm-hmm. when he and Naru are at the at the at the stop. You have the bag down again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like there's some, you know. I mean, these are not, these are not shots you're going to animate and do it in a cost-effective fashion unless there's a point to doing it. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's that deep look at one that makes me look at two in a similar vein. Mm-hmm. To then try and see where the threads are, are heading, see where this is going yeah. to tie into something. Mm-hmm. So, my opinion of it is better than it would be if I had just casually looked at it on my own. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. uh, I'm I'm curious. I'm more curious about the craftsmanship involved and how they're telling this story and presenting it to us from that perspective. So, and you know, mm, um, you know. I'm glad you're here with us analyzing it. And it's, it's where having that context helps as well, of realizing this show is trying to do something new with the Sailor Scout concept. How are they doing that? Yeah. They're clearly delaying it for a while. Why are they doing that? How, is, how are they structuring it to do so? Makes the show more interesting. Um, should we also be pointed out, like, this is directed by the guy who, you know, went on to assistant head right Macross 7, Storyboarded on Evangelion, um, Escaflone, Saber Marionette J, wow. Utna, um, right. Cowboy Bebop, like directed a whole bunch of other stuff. Like this is a this is somebody who knows what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and apparently got known for something I did not realize um, when he's brought into storyboard stuff. Um, he is brought into storyboard the quiet moments 
So on the Mecca shows where he's asked to storyboard, he's there to storyboard the moment where they're all sitting down together talking about something as a group, right? It's mm. not the big action sequences. It's right. how these characters are interrelating. Um, and seeing kind of that play out here of how he is establishing relationships and exploring those, kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a completely different animal. Yeah. Doing this, do you ever want to sit down with a classic Scooby Doo and see if you go through the very first Scooby Doo, episode one, episode yeah. two, and three, mm -hmm. and then whether the same kind of analytical sort of view of it could result in something more than just casual, mm -hmm. oh, it's Scooby Doo, they run around, haha. -ha. Yeah. Or is it just so much, you know, apples to oranges? Yeah anime lends to this creative thinking process of the people that are behind it that delivers a message that is far different than those who are in Hanna-Barbera trying to make well, a you know, 20 minute short to get you out the door and make some product placements um, you could do that with Thunder the, 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 uh, Thundar the Barbarian Barbarian, yeah okay. right. um, anime has the unique advantage of long form storytelling where right. they are deliberately planning for this long story because the manga is 28 volumes. So that is, I think, one of the things that, that makes it different that, you know, um, uh, Scooby-Doo, much less any other Hanna-Barbera shows, it's meant to kind of fill 24 minutes on television. Right. And that's, that's, that's his main thing. But although I do agree, I think you could, you could look at a, a show like <clears> that <throat> Even if just for its femorality, you know, how are they getting this done in the fastest way possible? You know? Right. Um, and why did they make Quick Draw and Draw El Gabong? Exactly. Yes. And whose idea was Scrappy Doo? Um, <laughs> you know, all, all, all the most important questions. But. Gal yeah. Galaxy Rangers. Why was it not more popular? No. <laughs> um, yeah. It's hilarious going back and watching Galaxy Rangers and going, oh, this was made in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're looking at the Laugh Olympics made here versus yeah. that, you could go, <laughs> well, right. hmm. there seems to be a whole quantum difference in how this is done. <laughs> yeah. Woody Woodpecker and ain't. Yeah. No. Totally. So yeah, there's there's things happening. Um, but when you get a guy like that to start, and then Kunihiko Ikuhara to end your your initial run, you know you got something special. Yeah. Sure. Mm -mm -mm. All right, that is episode two of Sailor Moon. Very curious to see where we get with uh, episode three. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news. Bunny has recovered. She actually came back up to where I was repairing the, uh, the, the, the antenna array and apologized for breaking the, uh, uh, the lever and was very nice. Uh, so I think she's fine now, although um, as she was going out, she accidentally tripped and... Um... <sighs> but uh, she didn't notice. And she she left, so um, um, I'm just gonna let that be. It's it's okay as long as she's happy. Um, I'll just deal with this. All right, thank you. Uh, until next time, watch more anime. <laughs>